Good morning uh, and good afternoon, everybody. We'll be starting this uh, webinar very shortly. I see there are more people connecting. Uh, now we had uh, 230 participants registered. Uh, and now the number of uh, people joining is, is growing. Uh, and we'll start in, uh, in a second. Uh, so I would like to uh, give a very warm uh, welcome to everybody. I'm head of program at ECPAT International. Uh, that is a global network of uh, uh, over 120 um, civil society organizations working to end uh, the sexual exploitation of children. Uh, and I'm also chairing the Child Protection Expert Group at uh, Destination uh, Mekong. Uh, and it's my pleasure to moderate this meeting uh, today. And I would like to welcome all the panelists that are here with us. And you can see all the names uh, here on, on, uh, on the slide. Uh, and all the participants, uh, as I said, we had over uh, 230 registered participants. We are very happy to have the representatives of the government, business, civil society organization and academia from this region and also from other countries. Uh, and we are organizing this uh, webinar uh, today with a child protection expert uh, group uh, here with us uh, um, is uh, um, Jens uh, uh, Trena Hart from Destination uh, Mekong, uh, who uh, thanks thanks to you, Jens, we could establish this group, and thanks you for con thank you for convening this this space. Uh, and we have members of uh, of the group, uh, um, Sophie um, Hartman, who is uh, the vice chair of the group, uh, and uh, is uh, um, representing the regional platform uh, asset. Uh, we have Bertie Lawson, uh, CEO of Sampan Travel and Nicole uh, Hausler, advisor to Myanmar Responsible Tourism Institute. Uh, so I'm very happy to have the members of the uh, Child Protection Group uh, with us uh, uh, today. And we are organizing uh, this meeting to discuss uh, the risks that various uh, forms of voluntarism pose to children, uh, including the um, critical risks that are related to uh, orphanage activities. And we take also this opportunity to launch the code voluntarism policy that was developed by ECPAT International with the code and with the support of uh, the Child Protection Expert Group of the destination uh, Mekong and other key partners, uh, um, including uh, Rethink Orphanages, Better Care Network, uh, Griffith University, and members of Human Trafficking Task Force of the World Travel and Tourism Council, WTTC, and other partners as well. Uh, so we are... Uh, organizing uh, this meeting to, to call upon governments and, and businesses in this region to, to work uh, together. Uh, so, we, so the tourism mm -hmm. is, uh, the voluntarism is regulated in activities with uh, direct contact with children and that only responsible and safe forms of voluntarism with or for children are organized. Uh, in particular, that uh, visits to orphanages uh, are excluded from uh, tourism uh, packages. And this is because uh, these activities pose a risk, they cause harm to children and uh, lead to unnecessary separation of children from their families. Uh, so today we will start this meeting with the opening words from uh, Jens uh, Trenahar, uh, who is the vice chair of um, the affiliate members board of UNWTO and CEO of Mekong Tourism. Uh, I will present briefly uh, the background for the uh, discussion today and the code voluntarism policy. Uh, Celine um, Verheyeren from Defense of Children uh, Netherlands is joining us to present experience from the Netherlands. Uh, and we will have two panel discussions uh, with the representatives of the governments and uh, with the members of the child protection uh, expert uh, uh, groups. So, uh, we have a big pleasure uh, having with us today, uh, Mr. Sieng Nak, the uh, Director of or International Cooperation uh, from Ministry of Tourism of uh, Cambodia. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us uh, today for, for the discussion. Uh, you can, uh, um, we will share in the chat the link to the bios of all the speakers, so you can uh, also read uh, uh, more. And I would like to invite everybody already now to uh, submit any questions you may have, but also 
um, any comments, reflections, uh, and additional information that you would like uh, to share, uh, you can do it through, uh, through the chat uh, box and we will have a Q&A session at the end. Uh, so I would like now to turn it to Jens uh, for the opening uh, words. Thank you very much, uh, Gabriella, and uh, thank you everyone for joining. Um, great turnout for this important uh, topic and webinar. Um, my name is Jens Trainhardt. I'm the executive director of the Mekong Tourism Coordinating Office and the founder of Destination Mekong. The Mekong Tourism Coordinating Office is the secretariat of the six member governments of the Greater Mekong subregion, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, and China um, to promote responsible tourism practices in the region. And Destination Mekong is the private sector led tourism board uh, that also has the Mekong Tourism Advisory Group, which has over 100 um, uh, participants from the uh, industry uh, giving advice to, to shaping responsible tourism in the region. Uh, within um, METEC <clears throat> or the Meta Mekong Tourism Advisory Group, we have now established also expert groups. We have ex eight expert groups uh, um, active right now, uh, one on education and research, arts and culture, wildlife tourism and conservation, food and agritourism, health and wellness, and child protection. And all these uh, expert groups are made up of passionate industry uh, professionals that bring their advice to the table and then also we're looking to bridge the gap between public and private sector to really make sure that we can accelerate the tourism recovery after COVID-19 when we're getting uh, out of um, these challenging times. Child protection is a very important topic. Sometimes it's maybe forgotten, especially when it comes to the COVID-19 crisis where everyone is just uh, looking obviously to survive, uh, to make sure that uh, at some point business will uh, will start again and that people get vaccinated. Uh, but I think now is a time especially to look at issues like child protection, like climate change, wildlife conservation, and also education to make sure that we don't forget about these important topics. Child protection um, obviously is something that is dear to our heart in the Mekong region and connected to that is the issue of volunteerism. And this is what this um, webinar is all about today. And I thank Gabriella and Sophie for putting it together and ACPAD and the code for launching this important new report. Volunteerism is defined as the act of practice of doing volunteer work as needed in the community where one is vacationing. The combination of traveling and volunteering, typically for a short period of time, is a trend that has evolved into an actual industry of upward of almost $2 billion a year. Well-meaning travelers may aim to make a positive impact while on the vacations by volunteering, but many times this can result in more harm than good. As more and more for-profit organizations spring up to take advantage of unsuspecting travelers, travelers are then unknowingly perpetuating the very problem they're attempting to solve. So this is what we're looking to discuss today how we can pre prepare the businesses, but also the travelers when uh, traveler re travel resumes after COVID-19 and how we make sure that we can protect the children and the culture of this region. With that, I wish everyone a very successful webinar. Uh, please get engaged and follow us. And for more information, uh, please uh, visit destinationmekong.com and mekongtourism.org uh, for information about tourism in the Mekong region. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Jens, for uh, this opening and uh, for uh, um, for allowing as part of the um, expert groups in Destination Mekong uh, to have also the topic of child protection prioritized among other sustainability issues, uh, which is uh, which is important, and uh, we we are great that this is happening uh, here. Thanks uh, thanks to the support of the Destination Mekong. Uh, um, so I would like to uh, briefly uh, give the background uh, for the um, code uh, volunteerism policy that will uh, set up the discussion and the two uh, panels. Uh, so for, for those of you who do, do not know uh, the code, uh, it's uh, 
chart for the code of conduct for the protection of children from uh, sexual exploitation in travel and tourism. And it's a multi-stakeholder uh, initiative that is hosted by ECPAT International. Uh, and it, uh, um, its uh, mission is to provide awareness, tools, and support to the travel and tourism industry uh, to prevent the sexual exploitation of, of children. So the code has uh, six criteria. Uh, and actions to which its members commit to keep children uh, keep it safe. And the code volunteerism policy is an additional requirement for all the common uh, companies. But uh, this policy is uh, um, available freely to, uh, to all um, other organizations that are interested uh, in this topic and in making the uh, ethical uh, choices. So um, why we developed uh, the volunteerism uh, policy? Uh, I think we don't have the, yeah, the presentation is coming back. Uh, so we developed it uh, to call upon travel and tourism uh, industry to run a uh, business in a sustainable and responsible way um, to ensure that only um, those forms of volunteerism uh, that are uh, responsible and safe uh, of children are undertaken and that they have positive impact on communities and, and children. So this can be done through excluding visits to orphanages from tourism packages, because uh, this drive institutionalization uh, of children that cause harm to them, and uh, regulating also other forms of uh, volunteerism that allow unvetted access to children that puts them at risk of being trafficked and sexually exploited. Uh, so the policy outlines criteria uh, for uh, the travel and tourism companies, uh, that are interested in the membership of the code uh, and also for other organizations uh, that, uh, um, uh, that are offering volunteerism products or are involved in uh, orphanages uh, activities. So, so what we mean uh, by volunteerism and orphanages, because it's also important to, uh, to clarify. Um, so the term volunteerism is, is used in many ways. Uh, uh, and in the policy, we define, as, as Jens uh, mentioned, as organized and packaged uh, trips uh, to volunteer for a limited period of time. And uh, volunteering usually involves international travel, uh, but similar risks to children apply also in the context of domestic and, and local uh, tourism. When, uh, when people are allowed to volunteer with or for children without previous background checks uh, nor skills. And uh, uh, the term orphanage also is used in uh, uh, many ways. It's widely used. We are uh, to, to uh, and it's encompassing various forms of residential uh, care, uh, whether actually they care for orphan children or or not. Um, so this term is not uh, truly representative so because representative because uh, the facilities often admit children that are actually not orphans. Uh, uh, so the orphanages uh, here in this context needs to be understood as uh, any form of residential care that refers to uh, any group living arrangements uh, where children are looked uh, for by paid staff uh, in a designated facility. So this can be also shelters, uh, small groups, homes, or larger uh, non-family based uh, uh, settings. Uh, and uh, what are the key concerns uh, over volunteering? in uh, residential care centers and visiting orphanages as, as tourism uh, excursion. So in the policy, we, we flagged uh, and explained more in detail uh, the main concerns uh, that relate uh, to fueling actually the growth of orphanages and separating children from their families, uh, while instead uh, countries should be developing family-based care models. Uh, um, it can also disrupt uh, children uh, development through repeated pat patterns of uh, attachment and abandonment. Uh, and it can also put children at risk of exploitation and uh, abuse. Uh, in the policy, we also flagged the context uh, that was mentioned by Jens of COVID-19 that increased vulnerabilities of children and their families uh, to exploitation. Um, and also, um, we need to look uh, forward what will happen after the uh, COVID pandemic when the tourism uh, restart uh, and how we can make sure that uh, the recovery phase of the industry is, is done in an ethical way. And the, um, 
interesting here to mention and maybe uh, later uh, some of, uh, I think, uh, participants from Better Care Network, they can also tell us more about the recent uh, uh, study that was, uh, that was done by them on impact of COVID on uh, residential care institutions, which uh, demonstrates that actually the institutions intend to resume volunteering and resume uh, visits, despite uh, the recognized uh, detriment and risk uh, to children um, these activities have. Uh, so one, one thing is visits to orphanages, but also besides uh, visits to orphanages, there are other forms of, of volunteerism that need to be uh, regulated, and we also flag it in the code policy. And this can be uh, teaching, sports, activities that are carried with, uh, with children in, in, uh, in the communities that may expose them uh, to risk of uh, sexual exploitation if these activities are not regulated and if there are no background checks to the people that are involved uh, uh, in these activities. Uh, this can also uh, include uh, um, any activities in local uh, communities. Uh, um, when, uh, uh, when travelers go there and um, carry on uh, some educational or other activities or artistic activities with children. Uh, so these kind of activities have, of course, very strong potential to, to help improve the, the living of the local communities. Uh, and reduce poverty, but if there is uh, uncontrolled uh, access uh, by travelers to local children, this uh, poses uh, risks. So it's important that uh, companies, uh, if they include any uh, uh, type of activities like that, they, they take uh, action to mitigate the risk, uh, have clear policies, have clear uh, procedures, and require a criminal background uh, uh, checks. Uh, and uh, yeah, the role is of the businesses uh, and the role is also of the governments uh, that uh, need to create an enabling environment where the volunteerism, uh, including visits to orphanage, is regulated at country level. Um, and, uh, um, uh, and there are standards for the tourism industry that actually would require them uh, to do so. Uh, so you can read more in the code volunteerism policy. You can see here how it's structured. And uh, uh, importantly, uh, we are thankful to all the partners that help us develop this policy. Uh, you can see here all the partners that uh, participate uh, um, in, uh, in the development of the policy that it's uh, now freely uh, available for the travel and tourism companies beyond the code members. Uh, and uh, it serves as a call uh, for action to offer only safe uh, forms of volunteerism with and, uh, and for um, children. And uh, uh, I would, before we start our panels and the discussion, I would like also to take this opportunity to ask uh, Celine, as uh, in the, Celine is uh, representing uh, PCI Netherlands uh, ECPAT member. Uh, they worked on this topic in their country, and uh, there are some. Uh, uh, examples and experiences that uh, uh, Celine uh, can uh, can share with us. Uh, what is uh, uh, what is being done with the government, with the private sector, and also with with young people uh, uh, to to raise their awareness about this topic. Uh, over to you, Celine. Thank you, uh, Gabriela. Uh, yes, we are working on this topic quite uh, a while now, together uh, with Better Care Network Netherlands. That is a uh, yeah, collaboration between all yeah with all kinds of child rights organizations um, and may, uh, next slide please Damien um, what uh, we did we did a lot of lobby and uh, and, and um, made lot, lots of attention also in the media about the issue and that resulted that the government really recognized that there is a problem and that also the Netherlands and Dutch travelers have also influence uh, on this issue so uh, there was uh, first there was a roundtable organized with the international and national experts just to see what is the problem, what are the effects, what is the uh, what are the root causes, um, and then uh, there was an independent research done uh, to see what are the root causes, what are the effects of uh, of orphanage tourism, but also the scope and the actors within the Netherlands, and the aim of this uh, research was uh, to have. Uh, yeah, policy measures and actions that the government could take uh, to minimize this problem, and especially, of course, uh, yeah, the Dutch uh, travelers uh, in this. Uh, 
Uh, what came out of this research was a quite uh, large, oh, uh, back to the, the government, sorry. Uh, what came out is that um, we thought maybe that the private sector, uh, um, uh, the, the, the companies that earn money out of it um, was, part, was mostly the largest part, but that was not the case. In the Netherlands, there are almost 2000 private initiatives who sent most of the volunteers abroad to work in orphanages and also schools and uh, churches, for instance, have a large uh, part in this. And some uh, recommendations that were made in the, in the, in the research was to have uh, the, the topic, uh, the orphanage tourism, also assigned to a ministry so that somebody within the government is responsible for this issue. And also to start a dialogue with all types of providers. And that includes uh, the private sector, the, the private initiatives, the schools, uh, the churches, but also the um, donors eh, who, who give money to institutions who, who uh, do this. Um, so there were also uh, recommendations on uh, the organization's charity status or how to register to the Chamber of Commerce to have extra conditions uh, in these cases and also to have a, a, a requiring for the certificate of conduct so a criminal background for people who do volunteer work abroad with children. Uh, next slide please Damien. Um, back one back yes um, we also work with the private sector and there are all kinds of initiatives uh, within the private sector uh, there is uh, a branch organization started that is called volunteer correct and they have uh, developed together with better care network netherlands uh, quality standards which really bans orphanages of uh, working in orphanages as a, as a volunteerism and there's also a pledge uh, for private for the private sector for the uh, the private initiatives uh, to have yeah it's called every child a family and we also have developed a pledge for university uh, for people who do internships uh, abroad so that uh, there are no orphanages uh, in those uh, internships um, and what is very important is also that there is a fund in the Netherlands for organ especially private initiatives who work with orphanages because you cannot stop right away. So you need to have a really good um, yeah, um, yeah, system or to have a good process uh, to, to do this in a responsible way. So there are specifically funds uh, for organizations to do that. Uh, next. Um, and what we also try to do is to campaign to, to reach people who are searching to do uh, volunteer, volunteerism abroad, and we try to reach them with campaigns. And we have done a campaign for youngsters, young, ad, uh, young adults, and for internships. And also for, uh, we are now planning uh, a campaign for religious uh, youngsters. And what we see is that the young adults uh, really understand the issue very well and that they share it with each other. They find it very important uh, and that we need engagement from the private sector because uh, yeah, you need, of course, good alternatives. If, if they don't want to go to an or orphanage, what then? So that is also a huge part of our campaign is to show, well, OK, what is responsible? Um, Phone tourism when you're traveling abroad. So these are just uh, some highlights of the good practices in the Netherlands. Uh, I will now put a link in the chat of the research that has been done uh, by the government. And it's just a small uh, uh, English uh, um, summary of the research and uh, Damien last slide. If you want uh, to have more information on the issues that I just uh, explained, uh, you can uh, contact me anytime on this uh, email address. Thanks so much, uh, Celine, for uh, this uh, good uh, uh, examples of, of practical action with the governments, with businesses, and uh, with uh, young people as well uh, that, uh, um, uh, that can make a, a change. So thank you so much for, for sharing this. And uh, we would like now uh, to turn uh, to, um, to a discussion uh, that uh, Jens will, uh, uh, will moderate with uh, um, the participants uh, from the government. We have uh, uh, with us uh, uh, representatives of uh, uh, Cambodia and uh, Laos. Uh, uh, 
So I would like uh, now uh, Jens to turn over to you and introduce the panelists. Great, thank you very much, Gabriella. And uh, it's uh, a pleasure as well to integrate the public sector into this webinar as well. As you know, we on one hand work with the private sector with Destination Mekong and have created mm. this expert group. But then also um, we are very pleased to have uh, two countries joining us. One is Mr. Siang Nick, who is the um, uh, Deputy Director General of the Ministry of Tourism Cambodia and in the, in the planning department. And then we have uh, my good friend, Mr. Somshai uh, from the Ministry of Culture and Industry, Culture and Tourism of Laos joining us from Vientiane. Um, welcome guys, uh, it's glad to, to have you on board here. Um, I, I just have a couple questions. So we'll keep this very uh, quick and short. Um, the first question I want to ask you is actually, um, do you see value in really um, having uh, a, an expert group on child protection, other topics um, to inform you and the government to make right decisions? Because I, we, we do know it's sometimes difficult to get the right information from the ground to the government. And, and so one thing obviously that we're trying to create is this bridge between you know, the private sector uh, and then also the public sector. So uh, the first question to, to start it off would be to, to ask, do you see value in uh, this collaboration and making sure that the governments get the right information, the right uh, industry insight to make decisions? Mr. Somshai, maybe first. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Yen to inviting me to join the uh, panelists <coughs> of the uh, Mekong, uh, Disney Mekong uh, Sustainable Tra Travel and Tourism. First, I would like to, uh, uh, as a part of the uh, Sustainable Tourism and Respond uh, Travel and Tourism Development, the industry must be ensured that all the responsibility and safe form of the volunteers are taken. Uh, <clears throat> the example from the Laos, uh, Laos is one of the poorest country in uh, Southeast Asia. SOS uh, children village are starting working near the uh, capacity uh, city of uh, Vientiane in 1993. In the following uh, decade, due to the continuous hardship faced by the people of Laos, and our organization has uh, spent it and adapted this work, SOS Children uh, Village now uh, support the children and young people and uh, families in the six locations throughout the country. At the present, there are young people and family in six location, uh, six SOS uh, children, a uh, village in Laos, five SOS young uh, uh, facilitates, six SOS uh, king uh, gardens, and five SOS Hammond's uh, school. One is SOS uh, vocational walk, training center. And three SOS social uh, center, one is uh, SOS uh, medical center. And uh, beside this, uh, beside this, the, the training center for Lao Women Union and also the Lao Youth uh, Union have organized the training uh, in the field of uh, uh, women rights protection and also the uh, uh, the exploitation from the children, uh, especially in, in, in tourism sector, and culture preservation, in, and also the income generation activity, healthcare, and uh, vocational training for the, uh, uh, especially for the gender human rights. And we also have provide the hotline center uh, to help the people in this uh, situation. 
Great. Thank you, Mr. Somshai. It's a, a great overview. And we can see that obviously child protection is a, a focus area in Laos when it comes to tourism. Uh, maybe I want to move over to Cambodia to Mr. Singnik from the Ministry of Tourism, Cambodia. Uh, could you also give us an overview in, on what um, the Ministry of Tourism is doing when it comes to the issue of child protection and volunteerism? It's a uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Uh, Chen Tharat, Vice Chair, uh, UNWTO affiliate member, CEO, Mekong Tourism Strategy Consultation, and entrepreneur. Uh, Ms. Sela Samliang, Executive Director, Action for Le Enfant, IPAP member in Cambodia, distinguished uh, speaker, participant, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, uh, if uh, we learn that uh, uh, Cambodia have learned while enjoying the great benefit from the tourism, Cambodia also experienced some negative impacts uh, such as uh, pollution, uh, drug trafficking, and prostitution, especially uh, child trafficking for such service. That, uh, based on uh, we see the value of the, uh, the, the children and uh, so uh, how to protect the children and uh, based on, uh, on our Cambodia national tourism policy has uh, endorsed by the council minister on uh, since 19 December uh, 2008. The uh, national policy has uh, set natural uh, and cultural tourism with no policy to encourage uh, sexualism. Absolutely, the as again the sexual exploitation of ch uh, children in tourism. We also adopt the law on tourism in uh, like uh, in the article fifty. Tourists uh, are not allowing to take part in any activity in relation to drug uh, trafficking and use uh, sexual human trafficking and confinement child trafficking and sexual exploitation, prostitution, dissemination of uh, pornographic feature and material, money laundering and causing insecurity of the society. As a uh, regard with the uh, like uh, Cambodia national tourism policy and uh, law on tourism and uh, Ministry of Tourism of Cambodia has established a committee on child sex in tourism in uh, 2001, in collaboration with uh, relevant ministry, uh, institution, national and international organization uh, to prevent the child sex exploitation and child abuse in tourism. The committee has uh, determined two measures. The first measure is educational measures. We conduct a destination workshop on child sex in tourism. Uh, since uh, 2016 to uh, 2020, we got the, uh, up to now we got the uh, participant 1,195 big government, uh, big were from government official, private business, in tourism industry from 25 provinces throughout the country as well as NGO and partners to produce uh, the promotional material, such as videos, sports, and uh, stickers, booklets, signboard, and billboard at the community-based tourism and uh, resort, uh, as well as destination, tourism destination. And uh, second we, uh, measure is uh, administrative measures. Ministry of Tourism launched the administrative measures by suspending the and revoking license of tourism business, such as guest house, hotels, nightclubs, who are illegally cracked down in connection with the prostitution case. They do not comply with law on tourism regulation, guideline, as well as a national policy on child protection system, uh, which starting from the, uh, 2019 to 2028 to provide equal opportunity to all children to become qualified human resources. Con 
distributing the national development and enhancing children's rights and protection, as well as uh, in uh, revolving child-related issue in Cambodia. Uh, during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, government agencies work closely with national and international organizations, uh, such as, uh, especially like uh, UNICEF Cambodia, to prevent the sexual harassment on child during the uh, quarantine, uh, uh, quarantine of the COVID-19 and any abuse. Children able to call the child helpline on 12280 uh, uh, for help. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Singh Nick. Uh, some, some great information as well. And then I think um, what we're doing with Destination Mekong and the expert group on child protection, I think there will be a lot of collaboration that can be done uh, in the future. Maybe I just want to ask you both one a last uh, question, uh, and, and that is, um, where do you think uh, the importance lies when it comes to child protection as we get out of the COVID-19 pandemic? And what should be done? Um, how should the countries prepare for it, especially from a regal, regional standpoint? How should the Mekong member countries collaborate amongst each other to make sure uh, that um, the, uh, that child protection is is uh, an important uh, focus area. Maybe I'll start with Mr. Somshai again from Laos. Thank you, Mr. James. Uh, for Laos, I think this this work is very important to to us uh, because now there 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 are a lot of the the human trafficking uh, happens, but. The, the thing that our team in, in the Ministry uh, of Information, Culture and Tourism collaboration, uh, collaboration with uh, especially the Ministry of uh, Security, especially the Department of Police, and also the, <clears throat> the Lao Women Union and also the, the, uh, the Youth Center uh, to work especially to uh, keep the awareness to the, the people and also the, the target people to, to understand of the uh, human trafficking, uh, especially the impact from that. And also the Lao government also plan to use the volunteer to work closely with the, uh, the target group, especially with the, the people who are, as a victim, try to create more opportunities for them, to, uh, especially try to get the, uh, the job for them. And also the, <clears throat> uh, the, the, the ministry that related, they try to establish the regulation and uh, the, the law on, on the uh, management of uh, uh, this, this work as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Somchai. And Mr. Siang Nick from uh, Cambodia, uh, do you have any uh, thoughts on what should be done um, after the COVID-19 pandemic to focus on child protection? And how can the member countries of the Mekong region or even ASEAN uh, collaborate? Yes, uh, for, uh, for, uh... As good, like uh, up now, Cambodia is a grand, uh, as you know, grand, the first ranked country of the world to provide vaccination to the adults. Uh, as of the 22nd August uh, 2021, at adolescent uh, from 12 to 17, we has now has been injected for the first dose, uh, reaching around uh, 991,000. 215 uh, adolescents, around 50% of the adolescents, and uh, seven, uh, around uh, 7.8 million adults has been second vaccinated. Together with the uh, first dose, uh, booster dose, the Royal Government of Cambodia also set a goal to achieve COVID-19 vaccination for 10 million and a, a dal, uh, and uh, 2 million for adolescents by the end of this year to uh, re 
in uh, force the herd immunity in the Cambodia. As you know, like uh, uh, during this uh, uh, the COVID-19, uh, Ministry of Tourism has uh, developed a roadmap for Cambodia tourism promotion and recovery plan during and post COVID-19 uh, 2021 to 2025, which uh, include the use of digital technologies in the promotion and management of tourism industry and the vaccination program for both adults and adolescents. So the government of Cambodia plan to reopen public and private, uh, uh, starting from primary school, secondary school, and uh, to university. Uh, the new uh, they are studying in uh, November, uh, October or November this year. And we also welcome like uh, international tourists to vaccinate tourist package launching by the end of this year too. Just uh, for furthermore, like uh, Ministry of Tourism of Cambodia uh, has uh, uh, like, uh, we, we have no voluntary uh, policy, but uh, uh, to regulate the use of volunteer as a mention, like uh, NGO uh, use the existing laws, regulation and policy for any activity of the foreigner. Volunteers are doing in legal purpose of provide their interest in our local community, like uh, often but vulnerable children and so forth uh, are welcome. Mean that uh, if uh, they, they uh, for the voluntary uh, volunteerism, reason, we are welcome with kind and like charity. But if any activity affects with the laws of tourism, regulation, guideline, or domestic protocol for the or the uh, national policy on child protection system will be punished by the law of the government of Cambodia. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Singh Nick. So uh, I think some good information from uh, Cambodia that this is uh, obviously an issue for many countries in the Mekong region. And with my personal interactions with His Excellency, the Minister of uh, Tourism Cambodia, Dr. Tong Kong, I know that he has um, uh, a uh, priority set for sustainable tourism, responsible tourism, uh, and obviously climate change and child protection are themes that are within that. So with that, I, I thank both of you for your comments today. And um, again, uh, we look forward to collaborating with the government and also the expert group on child protection within Destination Mekong to keep this important topic uh, um, as, a, as a priority going forward. Thank you, and I give it back to Gabriela. Thank you very much, uh, Jens, and thank you, uh, Mr. Somaxi and uh, Mr. Sieng, for your overview and uh, important contributions. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, working together on uh, the issue of volunteerism, on uh, regulating the use of volunteers in uh, childcare centers and in any work with uh, children in all the countries in these regions in, in other regions, because it's important that we Certain practices are discouraged, uh, certain uh, things are regulated, and, uh, and that uh, there is a support to families and uh, community-based uh, care for, for all children. So thank you very much for these contributions, and we look to our continuing cooperation with the support of the Destination Mekong Club. <clears throat> so thanks you so much, and that uh, uh, I uh, also would like to remind everybody that if you have any questions or you would like to intervene after uh, the, the panels, uh, We'll open uh, later the floor uh, to question and answers, also interventions uh, from the floor. Uh, but now we will uh, um, move on to the second uh, panel that will be moderated uh, by Damien Brosnan, who is the manager of the Code of Conduct for the Protection of Children from Sexual Exploitation in uh, Travel and Tourism. And uh, um, the panel will be uh, together with uh, Sophie Hartman, who is the vice chair of um, expert group on child protection? And thank you, Sophie, for um, sharing this uh, this role with uh, with me. And uh, Sophie is a regional platform coordinator for Asset uh, HNC. Um, and we have on the panel also uh, Bertie uh, Lawson, the CEO of Sampan Travel, and uh, the company is also a member of the Code. 
Uh, and Nicola, Nicola Hausler, uh, who's advisor to Myanmar Responsible Tourism Institute. Uh, so over uh, to you, Damien. Thanks, Gabriella, and thank you for all the participants who are with us today and for the panelists who, who are going to be speaking with me. Um, I think we have three experts in the region, in the Mekong region, uh, in different aspects of the tourism industry. Um, so what we're going to do is to have a, a, a question for each of them and then to hopefully have a, a couple of extra questions for, for a bit of a discussion afterwards. Um, so thank you to, to Bertie, to Sophie and Nicole for joining us today. Um, maybe Bertie, I'll start with you. You're the CEO of Sampan Travel, which is a, a tourism, a tour operator, sorry, in Myanmar. Um, can you maybe take us through an example of, of how you've approached the issues around volunteerism and orphanage tourism and, and maybe give some suggestions about what tourism companies can, what actions tourism companies can take to protect children? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, 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 hi everyone. Um, hi, Damien. Hi, hi Gabriel. It's nice to be here. Um, yeah, as mentioned, so I'm, I'm uh, CEO of Sanfran Travel. We're based in Yangon, Myanmar. We do um, uh, tailor-made tours through Myanmar. Uh, we don't generally offer volunteerism packages. Um, uh, and not much, um, I mean, you know, orphanage tourism either, but, but we have taken action um, towards, um, in our own sphere, um, protecting children. And I'll maybe go through a few of those things as um, all the things I'll mention now are things that uh, organizations or companies of any size could, um, could enact for themselves. Um, so I think the first thing uh, that, that we came to when, when we approached it was um, just educating ourselves and, and training ourselves. Um, we all have an idea of what sexual exploitation within the tourism industry looks like, um, but perhaps we don't have an appreciation of um, just how broad it might be and uh, how diverse the form that it can manifest in um, might be as well. So I think training is key. Um, we, we joined the code uh, as a member in 2017, um, and that has provided us a lot of structure um, to our training because I've online modules which um, myself and, and every employee of Sandpan Travel takes off their probation. So whatever department they're in, um, all, all, all employees have, um, have a, a fairly good um, understanding of um, uh, sexual exploitation of children within the tourism industry. Um, but the code is just one example. So there's, there's, there's other, there's other um, uh, accreditation and, and training schemes that companies can join. Um, we're also a member of Travel Life, um, and Travel Life, they cover obviously all aspects of responsible tourism, but with um, a few modules on uh, child protection. So I think that is um, where any company should start. Um, and the training should be ongoing, but it also, should, as much as possible, it should extend beyond the office. Um, so uh, we work with a lot of freelance guides uh, for example, and in the past we've had SOPs and guidelines for guides which cover things like child exploitation and what to uh, what to look out for, what what them to do, what what them not to do. Um, but we're still going to we're now going to go further and actually with Travel Life we are able to um, invite guides to to join our account online and conduct um, online training themselves to ensure that they have the same thing that my team has. Because certainly for my tours. Um, they're, they're almost always um, with a guide. So the, that guide is, is that vital conduit between travel and community. So it's all very well for, for me and my colleagues to have the training, but actually the guides are the ones who are on the, on the front line, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, um, that's no, a good point. Yeah, um, uh, and um, but then you, you can go further again. So you know, looking, at, looking throughout the supply chain, so um, hotels and, and car rentals and, and specialist providers, um, we don't give a training to them because we don't have that capacity. But we do, um, we have uh, sustainability claw, uh, contacts with uh, child protection clauses within them, which are signed each year. Um, we have surveys, online surveys we send out to our partners who ask them to self-assess themselves and, and share what they are doing, uh, what policies they might have. Um, and beyond that, we, we, we intend to start, you know, as soon as possible, um, doing sort of 
audit sounds a bit formal, but but, but visiting our suppliers and really spending some time to really find out what they are doing and, and whether what um, they say they're doing is backed up in reality. Um, but but you know, doing it in a way of, of of bringing them on board if they're not already on board, or potentially learning from them if they're already doing um, uh, working on, on these issues. Um, and it's important. And this, this takes quite a lot of time. So we've made the decision that this will mean we probably end up working with less suppliers. It'll be a smaller pool of suppliers that we work with. Um, but those that we do work with, we'll know that much better, and we can really reassure our clients of the future that um, that we know where their money is going and 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 who's 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 helping arrange their trip. And the con in the context of Myanmar, that's something particularly important. Um, Can I jump in and quickly, quickly yeah, ask you a sorry. question? Does, Go it, ahead, with, yeah. with the suppliers, does that extend uh, beyond child protection? Does it uh, is it it's covering the the whole scope of responsible, sustainable tourism, or is it a very specific child protection um, clause that you're working with? Um, so we we the the contract is is called a positive impact contract, and it covers all aspects of of um, uh, responsible travel so so from from um, child protection to animal welfare to environmental um, issues um, but within that there is um, a clause which is specifically about child protection um, oh. and that actually I you know the code help us draft this and the fact that I believe the wording is verbatim from the code so they they say that this is the kind of thing we recommend you should be having in um, in in that contract um, and and before it was sent out to suppliers as a, we had a child protection clause and that was its own thing. Uh, now we've gone a bit further and it, it, it's part of a wider contract which we ask our, our suppliers to, um, to, to show they're on the same page as us. Um, yep. Yep. And the worst case, you know, um, we would have to, 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 to terminate that contract if there was a, um, a breach. Uh, Thank, thanks for the explanation. It's really good to see that it's, it's an integrated part of, of your business model? Sure, um, yeah, so I'm, I think that's, that's almost it really. I think it's important that, um, uh, you know, however you decide to um, assess or, or evaluate or, or understand your suppliers, that your sales team can see that and access that information clearly so that when they come to put a itinerary together, um, they know which suppliers um, we would prefer to use because of uh, their efforts towards child protection and other matters as well. Of course, in some circumstances, we will choose not to work with a supplier because we think they're just not doing enough. Um, but in most cases, um, uh, it's about choosing well who's doing more and who we really want to work with more. So making sure the sales team are um, fully involved in that process is important. Uh, and of course, informing the guests about their responsibilities um, as well. Um, and and then all this can go into a into a policy, which which again the code help us with, which isn't overly complex, nor is it very long. It's just saying what we're doing and and why we're doing it. Um, but it's important to have that, I think, because when any of my colleagues are talking to suppliers or to or to potential clients about these issues, having that policy there to back up what they're saying um, just just reinforces the point um, and puts that kind of stamp of um, uh, formality uh, on it. Um, so there, there, there are some of the things that, that we're doing. And like I said, they're all things that, that any organization of any size could, could, could do as well. Thanks. Thanks very much, Bertie. And, and I really like the idea of it involving all of the staff, uh, not just the management team or the, the front of house people, but, but the salespeople and, and others as well, as well as local communities and as well as customers, because it's an education process for everyone, I think, to, to go through to understand the risks for children because a lot of people don't uh, don't register that as, as being a risk as part of their travels. Uh, so unintentionally, they might be uh, putting children at risk. Um, I might turn to Sophie now, if I could, um, and ask about your work because you're working with, with training the next generation of, of hospitality employees in the Mekong region. Um, what do you think they need to understand before they enter their formal employment, and and how do you bring that up this this topic up, which is a really sensitive topic of exploitation of children? How do you bring that up with your students? Thank you very much, Damien, for your question. So uh, to answer it, I think that maybe I first 
have to briefly explain what asset agency is. So actually, we are a network of vocational training centers that prepare disadvantaged youth for a career in tourism, hospitality, or catering. And the network currently gathers across Cambodia, Myanmar, Thailand, and Vietnam. 12 schools that are all doing fantastic job to promote the professional integration of vulnerable population. And as a agency's role as a network is to make these schools even better by facilitating peer learning, providing capacity building support, and scaling up schools' visibility at regional level. And in doing so, we also strive to promote more sustainable forms of tourism. And this may be for two main reasons. The first one is as more customers seem to care about sustainability, it is important to integrate this topic in training programs to make them even more tuned to the needs of the industry. But at the same time, through the youth that they train, asset agency members are also a major source of influence on the sector. And by equipping young professionals with skills and knowledge on sustainability, they can support and even accelerate the transition to a greener and more responsible industry. And actually promoting more sustainable forms of tourism means reducing negative uh, impacts that the industry can have on communities. And unfortunately, the sexual exploitation of children is one of them, as sex offenders can take advantage of uh, tourism or hospitality infrastructures to sexually exploit children. So to train the students to react appropriately if they are faced with a case of child sexual exploitation in the workplace, some of our members have uh, created dedicated training courses on the topic, during which students will learn about how serious the issue is and the importance of reporting suspicious cases. Other members will bring up this topic in the frame of more general life skills courses, during which they will discuss questions like abuse, sexual exploitation, and harassment, which actually are all to be particularly important uh, for students who come from disadvantaged backgrounds because they may be also more vulnerable to these issues. Thank you, Sophie. Um, can, I, can I ask you, uh, the, the, maybe the cultural sensitivity of, of the issue of sexual exploitation of children, it, it looks a lot different in different countries all around the world. Uh, I think increasingly the industry and governments and NGOs are finding it um, more possible to talk about and to be honest about it, but there's often a real resistance. Um, I know when I talk to companies in different countries, they say, yes, it's a really big problem, but it doesn't happen in our country or it doesn't happen in our city. Uh, what would you say to, to that sort of response in, in terms of, the reality that you, you see and, and the people you work with see? Well, I, I think that's also one of the reasons why we want to introduce that topic at the early stage, because we are working with, with young people who might be maybe a little bit more open-minded. Again, also, uh, we are talking uh, with, about kids, because some of our students are still minor, who yep. uh, are coming uh, from poor communities and who may already have actually um, experienced this kind uh, of situation. And what we realize is that uh, somehow, because if they consider some kind of normal, they might not be aware of it. So that's also one of the reasons uh, why these topics of abuse, sexual exploitation, and so on, are given so much uh, importance um, during our training programs to, to make sure that if students are faced with this kind of things, well, especially if there are victims, they know that it's not right and they know their rights and, and they know how to deal with that. Yeah, no, thank you. It's a really good point. And, and yeah, you're right. Uh, if you're working with young people, it's, it's um, not just the businesses they're going to be involved in, it might be then themselves who, who might be a victim and, and might not know um, due to the, the prevailing circumstances that, that it's, uh, that's a crime and that people can be prosecuted and, and punished for, for what they've done uh, if they exploit children. Um, I'll turn to Nicole now. Um, Nicole, you work a lot with, or you work with an industry group, with a responsible tourism industry group. How do you see 
these sorts of groups and also governments um, working with the private sector and tourists in, in addressing the risks in voluntourism, maybe in Myanmar or maybe more broadly? Okay. Thanks, Damian, for asking and raising this question. Uh, greetings from Germany. Just again, also a little bit of a background regarding my situation. I was based in, in, in Myanmar between 2012 and 2020, and due to COVID-19 and, and the military coup, I'm, I'm currently based in Germany, but hopefully can return soon to, to Myanmar. I'm working as an advisor for the Myanmar Responsible Tourism Institute. I'm in constant contact with them. And also, it, this is not a government organization. It's, it's a CSO. But coming back to your question uh, regarding um, the role of the industry groups, like uh, DMOs, like um, uh, tourism associations, and also the government. And I would like, I think I'm going to sum up a little bit of what all our previous speakers have been mentioning. I think here four action points are very important. And the first one is related to capacity building, the second to awareness raising, the, the, third, the third is to offering responsible tours, and the fourth is related to uh, volunteer tourism policies and child safe tourism policies. Let me come to the first one regarding capacity building. I can really see here um, a role also, for example, by the government if they are offering um, training courses for, for local guides, uh, child safe tourism and also the aspect of volunteer tourism should be part of the curriculum and should be even part of the exams from my point of view. Yeah, And I think we have forgotten a little bit about this important pot, uh, topic in the, part, uh, in the past. Um, the second one is related, capacity building is related also to e-learning courses. Um, I'm helping to develop currently an e-learning course on, on child safe tourism for an organization in Northern Africa. And I think this would be also very helpful to push for these kind of e-learning programs, which you can see on a smartphone whenever you have the time for guides and for tour operators. But then, of course, uh, adapting it to the local circumstances and offering it even in, in the local um, language. The second one is related to awareness raising. And um, here I can, this is of course that also the governments and the DMO should play a role to make yeah, the, the tourism sector, the private sector aware of this issue, but not only the tourism sector and the guides, from my point of view, also the government and the DMOs or tourism associations should actively contact also the tourists to make them more aware about this topic. And maybe Damien, you can share one poster which has been developed by the, Myanmar Responsible Tourism Institute um, in 2018. Can you share that one? Yeah, this one. Can you go down? Um, this one was developed uh, 2018 uh, with, a, with a statement, responsible tourism is child tourism. And um, the, the, um, the announcement is be a responsible traveler and what should you not do? as a tourist, yeah? You should not visit communities to learn more. What you should do is to visit communities to learn more about life in Myanmar, uh, give through local networks, to uh, uh, local CSOs, learn more about the impacts of tourism on children and support social enterprises and local businesses. But what should you not do as a tourist? You should not dis disrupt learning by visiting schools or an orphan orphanage. Um, you, should not, you should not expect to visit an orphanage simply because you are in the region and you should not give money to, uh, to children. And I think these kind of posters can be really also supported and encouraged uh, to be done by, by the government and by the private sector uh, and by the uh, DMOs. The fourth, uh, the third one, you can close this poster. The third one uh, of my topic is related to responsible tours. Uh, and, we, uh, and this is exactly what Bertie has been mentioned. Uh, the government can also help and or DMOs to check with the tour operators um, uh, regarding their tours. Are there any really risky um, uh, moments where they are going to meet children? And then it should can be also discussed what are the other options to do this instead of visiting an orphanage, visiting, for example, a CSO, visiting a female handicraft center where the tourist can buy um, a local handicraft. What are the options? So these kind of offering responsible tours should be also more mentioned. And the fourth one is mentioned to, uh, is related to policies and and the law. And this has been especially mentioned by the representatives of of of, of Laos and of Cambodia. Yes, it should be part of ideally by the law, 
uh, but at least uh, that uh, responsible tourism policies are going to be set up. And, and in these policies, it's recommendable to include especially these as aspects of child safe tourism and volunteer tourism. Thank you so much, Nicole. And, and I think the idea of, of working together to inform travellers is, is a super important um, aspect of this, as well as having practical alternatives when customers or travellers, yeah. tourists want to go to, to visit an orphanage, if they say, and what do you give them as an alternative? Because you can't And in all the Mekong countries, thanks, sorry for interrupting you, no, no. but in all the Mekong countries, we have so many uh, uh, local initiatives, uh, yeah. uh, entrepreneurships, uh, female-run entrepreneurships, where I think there's also an option to visit them if they are interested to do. And yep. then there are quite often also opportunities actually to start, yeah, in, in terms of businesses, because yep. in these CSOs, yep. they can sell maybe also something like handicrafts, yeah? yeah. So there are other options, yeah. Have you seen, can I ask you quickly before we go into the general discussion, uh, have you seen before you left, I guess, and, and even talking to people still in Myanmar now, have you seen much change, either positive or negative, around the issue of volunteerism in the last, say, five, ten years? Actually, um, I, I, Myanmar, I, I would say, so is is not has been not so as advanced as other Mekong tourism countries. There has been mm -hmm. so far not so many offers, but there was yep. a first thinking to start these kind of things, and for that reason, uh, the Myanmar Responsible Tourism Institute has started to raise this kind of awareness. Yeah, already yep. two two years ago. But if you ask me, um, in, in case, for example, yeah, the COVID situation is changing also um, due to the political change, more tourists will come to Myanmar, then I'm again a little bit worried that again, we are going to have this discussion about visiting orphanages, yeah, because uh, the, the, the economic situation is not very favorable in the Mekong region, on especially also not in, in Myanmar. So that might be also the message then, okay, please let's visit orphanages, yeah? We, uh, yeah. Please donate something. So one of the first issues I would say in the uh, post-COVID area should be really, again, to focus on this topic. Yeah, not only yeah. let tourists come, but also to raise awareness on this topic. Yeah, well, that leads me perfectly into the question that I had for, for the whole panel um, next is, Assuming and hopefully um, as COVID becomes less um, impactful around the world and we see tourism come, come back up in, in probably record numbers in the future, um, do you think that the, the traveling public, the tourists around the world will be looking for more sort of alternative uh, tourism options, which might include more community and volunteerism and orphanage tourism? Is that a concern for, for all of you? We, um, I, I think, um, I think potentially orphanage tourism, just to focus on that first, is, is, is maybe going in the direction of uh, elephant camps. Um, from what Celine was saying earlier, it seems like in, in certain markets, orphanage tourism is already seen something that's a bit unsavory of them to do. But that isn't to say that in other parts, in other markets, um, this is going to become more popular. You know, there's still plenty of people seeing elephants you know, painting and playing cricket these days. So, yeah. um, so I think potentially, yeah, like uh, Nicole says, we should be looking out for that. Um, as for volunteerism, I think I think it probably will get more popular. I mean, it's a very broad uh, type of travel, um, and that's why you know having a policy is nice because it it it, it, it helps only you know, the good types of volunteerism to come about. Um, as far as I see it, I mean, we, my company doesn't do volunteerism really at all. Um, but yep. you know, if volunteerism is you know the idea of doing something good and meaningful while you travel, well then why isn't the whole itinerary good and meaningful? Why is it just that <laughs> part of it? Yeah. You know, yeah. why can't all the experiences be meaningful for the traveller and all the and because of the supply chain and 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 where the money is going, all of it's also doing good. Um, so I think if 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 people just want if people want to do, do good while they travel, I think that's that's great and that, that will that should be encouraged. But I think um, it doesn't have to be through volunteering. You need to um, plan carefully and um, think about where your money is. Yeah, it's a hard balance because you, you don't want to get in the way of good intentions and, and uh, hopefully good actions. And, and most people, I mean, we focus on sexual exploitation of children, but that's only one small part of the, the issues around volunteerism, especially orphanage tourism. 
as Gabriella talked about when when she was opening the session. Um, but it's a, it's a hard discussion sometimes to have with with tourists and customers and companies, to be frank, um, about what what are the issues and and what are the alternatives and and why should you think about this maybe a little bit more. Um, so yeah, um, Nicole, uh, Sophie, any, any further comments on on that question? Okay, Nicole's good. I can't see Sophie. Okay. Um, all right, thank you so much for your contributions and perspectives. It's really interesting to see the different parts of the industry uh, and stakeholders um, working together uh, on this. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll um, we'll see an improvement in the future uh, in Myanmar and in the region and around the world. I'll uh, pass back to Gabriella with that. Thanks. Thanks so much, uh, Damien and uh, Nicole, Bertie and, and Sophie for this. Uh, uh, perspective uh, from uh, about you know how we need to involve uh, the governments and business and young people uh, to work all together on this. Uh, I um, encourage everybody to ask questions. In the meanwhile, uh, I um, I know there is a, a participant from uh, uh, Cambodia, uh, Avigail Orha. I will uh, allow you to intervene uh, uh, now. Avigail is from uh, Apple Cambodia. <laughs> ECPAT member. Okay, if you can speak. Yes. Uh, hi, thank you, Gabriella, and hello, everybody. Um, I'm from Apple Cambodia. Uh, we've been uh, and a member uh, of ECPAT. Um, first of all, I just want to say that it's great to see all these initiatives and the collaboration that is being done uh, with the uh, both private sector and governments and uh, different uh, CSOs in order to make sure that uh, we are promoting the sustainable travel and tourism. Um, I just wanted to raise a little bit of uh, the perspective from uh, Cambodia's uh, side, uh, from our experience in the organization working directly uh, again uh, to fight uh, child sexual abuse and exploitation. Um, so Gabriela has been mentioned this a little bit in the introduction about uh, how important to uh, we see the need for uh, uh, regulations and to ensure different uh, background checks. So, uh, of course, when we are thinking about uh, volunteerism, uh, we don't want to uh, uh, stop uh, people from trying to want to do good. However, um, there, uh, there is a situation currently in the country where uh, people are coming and uh, working directly with children who have not been uh, have, have been through a certain background checks. And even in a study that Apple has conducted uh, a few years ago, we have seen that from all the convictions of child sex offenders through our cases, uh, uh, about 50% um, have been uh, had prior convictions uh, in the past, and 7% uh, uh, were working uh, with children directly. Uh, now, this is something that could have easily been prevented if there was um, uh, specific laws that are uh, ensuring that uh, any person who will have uh, contact with the child, uh, 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 that they, they would be first of all checked to ensure that uh, they uh, uh, don't have any criminal background uh, record. Um, and. Uh, we, uh, even though this is uh, in some organizations, we do find it within policies and within their internal uh, policies and regulations, it is not enforced. And you will quite commonly see um, uh, uh, people in organizations who are trying to, um, that they're in desperate need of uh, workers. And so they will hire a person even if they didn't fully um, do the, the criminal background check. And Apple has been doing a lot of awareness raising and trying to promote this issue, uh, both with organizations in order to raise this topic. Uh, and uh, we also in, in conversations with the, uh, and meetings with the government officials in order to encourage um, um, the regulation of uh, certain uh, uh, procedures uh, in anything that's related to travel and tourism. So yeah, I just wanted to add that little bit uh, from uh, Cambodia side. 
Thank you so much, uh, Abigail. That's uh, that's a really uh, uh, important point, and uh, and thank you for giving the the country uh, perspective uh, on that. And it's uh, definitely uh, one of the points uh, we we need to work uh, uh, together on with the countries and uh, with uh, with the commitments that are already there to to improve uh, laws at country level to, to better protect children to ensure that the criminal background checks uh, are. Um, are there for any people that want to uh, work uh, with and for uh, children. Um, okay, I see now uh, a question. Uh, there is, a, it's from anonymous attendee. Uh, what do you think is the most important thing that everyone must be aware of as the travel industry recovers from the pandemic? Uh, would any of the uh, speakers like to take on this question? So, um, Gabriela, can you repeat this question again? Yes, sure. Uh, what do you think is the most important thing that everyone must be aware of as the travel and tourism industry recovers from the pandemic? I think we already, some of the points were mentioned in, in previous discussions, but uh, maybe this is like a key point which you think uh, is uh, is the most important uh, from your perspective can i can i maybe uh, what what we have been discussed already uh, at least as a raising this issue on child safe tourism i think yeah. for most of those who are working in the tourism industry they are still not aware of this issue and and especially also not the guides because they are not trained on it and and the guides are for me really an important um, mediator also between the tourist and and wow. and um and the two operators and, and the local hosts. So, so from my point of view, it's really raising awareness on this topic, yeah, in the industry. Yeah, definitely. And uh, and that's uh, great that we have this platform and we have uh, uh, an expert group on child protection. And uh, this is also an opportunity for uh, maybe to invite other people that are here with us, uh, if anybody would like to join this group and work uh, closer uh, together with us on this issue in, in the region. And also uh, regarding the guides, uh, it's, uh, it's key to involve them. And uh, I can share here an example because in uh, Latin America, there is a group of uh, ministries of tourism that closely work together. It's 16 ministry of tourism. It's a regional action group that it's called GARA. And they're actually working on a guidance for the guides, uh, uh, how they should uh, prevent uh, sexual exploitation of children. Uh, and also um, reflect the, the topic of uh, voluntarism that should be addressed and uh, that uh, guides can actually also discourage uh, uh, travelers and tourism from any visits to orphanages. Uh, so um, that, that will be a good uh, um, uh, and practical uh, example of some materials also developed from other regions that, that can be uh, shared in, in others. And Gabriella, maybe I could also uh, jump in and um speak i think bertie highlighted it uh during his uh, piece about the importance with working with partners with transportation companies with hotels mm -hmm. with others who are also uh, you know directly engaged with communities and with tourists um so i think that's that's a, a clear avenue um to to expand the influence and and get the message out to to the companies and to the tourists mm -hmm. um uh, there was also another question that came through a few minutes ago um, to asking about how to ensure that child protection systems are in place. Um, certainly for volunteerism, the, the code's volunteerism policy is, ask, is, is uh, requiring uh, police certificates for any volunteers working with, with children. Um, the reporting mechanisms are very different from country to country. Sometimes it's a, a local uh, city or local community number. Sometimes it's a national hotline. Sometimes it's online. So it, it's it's very different. There are some international mechanisms, and Gabriella, you might want to speak about this a bit more. But there are some international mechanisms in place uh, in some countries that that people, tourists especially, can can report suspicious cases. Um, but I think it's it's the role of everyone to to be aware, and that that's still, as Nicole said, still the biggest challenge that people just tourists and um, 
the, the tourism industry are generally unaware that this is a problem um, and, and a risk for, for children. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Damien. And, uh, and definitely another element uh, to that is uh, ensuring that actually reporting any suspicious cases of sexual exploitation of children by any people uh, that have contact with children and can observe such situations is uh, made uh, mandatory. Uh, so um, that's uh, that also uh, an element uh, to call for uh, to a legislative change at country level. So, so many many important uh, uh, points that were raised uh, uh, on how uh, governments uh, can be engaged, uh, how they can uh, help uh, um, improve uh, uh, the laws to better protect children, uh, practical approaches uh, that the business uh, can take. Uh, um, and uh, how business can also uh, inform travelers uh, about uh, uh, this uh, this issue. Uh, we um, yeah we talked also about uh, awareness that it's important. Awareness also maybe I will add here among the communities, local communities themselves, because if they have tourists uh, arriving there and the communities themselves are not aware of the risk uh, to the children, um, they uh, their vulnerability is is higher. So the um, uh, awareness uh, about the, the risk uh, among the communities and uh, and great to see um, here also participation of some uh, students uh, because uh, well tourism is demand driven if uh, students and young generation realize that's not the way to go uh, they can help also uh, change uh, this pattern and make sure that uh, um, that um, Anything they, they do with the communities in meaning, is meaningful and uh, for children and uh, protects children and is safe to, for them. Um, I think with this, we can uh, move on to uh, the closing uh, words by um, if there are no additional questions, I don't see additional questions nor any requests for uh, interventions. Then we can, can, move I, on. can I just yeah Gabriel, can I just add something because I think from Go my ahead. point of view you have been mentioned something very important which I also have been forgotten mm -hmm. I've been talking mm -hmm. when we talk about uh, awareness raising and capacity building I was talking about the private sector also the government yeah and uh, and the tour guides but yes um, of course we need to uh, contact also the universities and the professors who mm -hmm. are teaching tourism and hospitality. Mm -hmm. And this covers the bachelor programs and also the master programs. A child safe tourism needs to be a standard module, from my point of view, mm -hmm. in all the bachelor and master uh, courses on tourism. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, very important uh, point, uh, uh, Nico. We see uh, additional uh, comments in the questions and answers box. Uh, uh, yeah, that awareness is done, but uh, it doesn't mean that the travel and tourism sector actually accepts all the information delivered. Uh, well, it's true. Uh, it's, a, it's a long process. Uh, sometimes it's a challenge. Uh, uh, so um, um, Kirin uh, Kiri, uh, says that uh, we need solid policy on child safe tourism and actual implementation. And uh, absolutely true. That's always uh, a challenge and we need uh, more committed companies uh, as uh, um, as we have uh, some fun travel that uh, that uh, works on the implementation of this policy, and you are a great example that it doesn't matter what size is the company, they can be engaged and and do the change. Yeah, and maybe if I can add quickly to that, Gabriella, uh, it's a good point. I, from um, a perspective of of companies, I think the other thing, the key message, is that this is an issue that happens around the world. Um, mm. not just to do with volunteerism, but to do with exploitation of children. Sometimes it's domestic offenders traveling for work. Sometimes it's international travelers uh, seeking to exploit children. It's not confined to one country. Every country in the world experiences this problem. And doing something to prevent this doesn't mean that there's been a problem with your company or with your city or with your community. It means you're doing the right thing and making sure it's not a problem in the future. Yeah, very, very good uh, uh, point, Damien. And uh, it's a um, it's a problem for all the regions. Uh, so uh, also just just to add to it, uh, we are launching for the first time the code policy uh, here in, with uh, destination Mekong, but we'll be launching the policy also in other regions. Uh, 
and uh, the policy itself is also available in Spanish and Portuguese. Uh, so we'll be also working on it in, in Latin America, uh, where it's a um, equally uh, relevant uh, uh, topic. Uh, so uh, with that, I would like now to turn uh, to uh, Jens uh, to uh, for closing uh, remarks. Is, uh, oh. Hey, so I'm back. All right. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't know I was uh, going to do some closing remarks, but um, <laughs> but no. I mean, thank you very much for uh, I think this important webinar. Some very uh, good discussions here, and I'm also very impressed by the attendees. So uh, almost uh, 200 participants. So that just shows that. This is an important topic that needs to be discussed further. Um, we obviously know that uh, tourism is uh, right now um, in pause for many countries, especially in uh, Southeast Asia during the pandemic. Uh, but I think we need to now leverage this time to make sure that we are prepared um, I like one comment that uh, Nicole made to, to visit social enterprises and small responsible businesses. Mm -hmm. We have the Experience Mekong Collection, which is a you know, curation of a small businesses in the Mekong region that give social impact. Um, and uh, I think that's a great platform to make sure that people that want to travel purposefully, uh, responsibly, and also experience um, you know, authentic local places uh, we have actually taken the time to find these businesses, engage with these businesses, and also work with these businesses. Um, so I think this is something, uh, again, to make sure that uh, this option is there. Uh, these experiences make, um, make the region what it is. Um, it is about these small businesses, and many of them create uh, social impacts, environmental uh, impacts in, in all different levels. But supporting these businesses also will drive sustainability mm -hmm. for the entire region. So I think this is one way, um, because I think child protection is, is one piece, but we need to look at it in a more holistic way from a sustainability standpoint. But sometimes, uh, as we mentioned before, um, uh, child protection is forgotten. And also, um, I agree with uh, Nicole that uh, there needs to be more awareness of child protection, especially volunteerism, because I think a lot of people just think that when I go somewhere and I do volunteerism, I do good things. And um, I think that's not to say that volunteerism is a bad thing, but I think there needs to be awareness of what's good and what's bad. So again, I think it's an important topic. Uh, I know the expert group will do more work on this. Um, so thank you very much. And I applaud all, all the efforts that have been done so far, and also the integration with other uh, expert groups. We have an expert group on education, and, and I think these integrations with other expert groups to collaborate together uh, will become more and more important. So with that, thank you very much, and I'll give it back to Gabriela. Thank you very much, Jens, for, uh, for disclosing uh, remarks that are very down and straight to the point, and, uh, and thanks again for creating this platform. I mean, this is a uh, uh, so important that uh, we can uh, meet together with the governments, with the businesses, with academia, uh, with uh, all the partners that we can cooperate with. And we will follow up uh, after this meeting. Uh, we will share uh, the code policy with, uh, with everybody so it can be promoted among uh, small uh, businesses, among big businesses in the region. And we also share the recording from, the, from this webinar with, with other um, uh, um, partners and uh, so so this can be for of reference and we are looking forward to working uh, together on this topic uh, uh, in uh, um, destination uh, Mekong. Thank you so much. With this, uh, the meeting is uh, is closed now. Thank you very much, everybody.